continue on with commands. So today I have some, well, some of them perhaps can be referred to as text editing commands, but they are mainly for file listings and for combining with other commands in order to obtain better results. Anyway, I'm going to show you very soon what I mean. So first off, we have echo. So echo is, well, just read the English word and think to what that particular English word is referring to. Basically, it's an echo. You say something and then it is repeated. Okay, let's say echo. Hey there, how are you? Excellent, so it just echoed it out to the standard output, but this can be also redirected, and I will talk a great deal a bit of, uh, about redirecting uh, traffic from standard output and standard error uh, and such stuff. You do it basically like this or with the arrows. Let me just show you a very simplified example of this. So let's say we want to echo this to a file echo. Excellent. And now we can use the cat command, which is echo. Excellent. It says, hey there, how are you? That is the contents of the echo file. But if I change this and if I say just, hey, oops, sorry, hey to echo, it's going to delete everything in there and it's just going to write hey. So be very careful with echo, what you do and how you actually behave with it. Primarily because you can end up messing around with the content of other files, deleting them and substituting them with something else. But echo is a very nice thing, especially in bash scripting. It allows you to actually be informed. It allows for that verbose output that you are getting with it when you're running commands, when the command, when the program is actually telling you, oh, okay, I am doing this now. After that, I'm going to be doing this. It takes me this much time to do that, and so on and so forth. So it's a very nice functionality. It's a very nice feature here. Anyway, we'll just take a look at echo dash dash help. Be sure to take a look at, oh, wait. No, okay. This is one of those cases where you cannot access the help like this, but fear not, there is, we got the man pages. What do the all-knowing man pages say? So, look, it's not, I mean, okay, yes, it's a fairly simple command, uh, but that does not have to mean that it doesn't have any arguments. Just check this out. There's so much of it. Well, maybe not as much as in the others, but certainly a good amount of them. So you have these escape characters. We're going to be learning about them quite a bit later on, but uh, how to use them. But, for example, if you wanted to echo a backslash, or, sorry, if you wanted to, let's say, echo a quotation mark, you would need to use a backslash as an escape char character for that. Or if you wanted to echo a backslash, you would need to use backslash as an escape char character for itself. Well, let me just, sh I'll show you what I mean in a moment, but for the time being, uh, I'm just going to have a look at these options. Excellent. So we need dash E to enable interpretation of backslash escapes. Very, very important. I will show you why in a moment. Okay, so capital E is apparently disable it, which is not the, not the best of things. So let's, here you have the synopsis like with any other command, but let me just show you what I mean by this. So if I typed in, let's first clear the screen. If I typed in e oops, echo test, I don't know, backslash, hmm, what did I get? The command is not done. It's interpreting, it's actually waiting for, it's offering me a chance to issue more inputs. So if I type in the quotation marks again, you see what happened there. So first of all, let's go about this one more time. Now I have typed in here echo as before and I have the quotation marks and I have test the word test inside and in addition at the end of the word test I have an escape character. 
escape character basically tells it do not uh do not inter like interpret this and please print it out do not interpret it as a part of your command because the quotation marks are part of the command or the argument for the echo basically they provide the border lines for the string that you are putting in here this i suppose there isn't much point to put them now because there's just one word but let's say i have uh how was your test well how did you do your test would be a better way how did you do your test excellent so now this wouldn't function without quotation marks because you have spaces in between if you don't have any spaces in between the words then you can do this without the quotation mark or should be able anyway but since the quotation marks are part of this command uh, the backslash here tells tells to the echo that hey this guy at the end this last quotation mark is actually not a part of your standard command you are supposed to print this out only and not interpret it as a command you should interpret it as a part of this entire string which is of course a bit tricky because then echo doesn't quite understand it's just waiting for you to give him more so it can finish so if I press enter now I just get prompted hey I need something else it's expecting something else it stands to reason to it that you should type something else and quite frankly it is uh, it is quite rational that you should so I just add another quotation mark which will match its twin at the beginning so these two will be beginning and the end because this one can't be as it was actually there is an escape ch character in front of it and it completely throws it out of the equation so if I press enter here there we go how did you do your test and then the quotation mark at the end that's pretty much the only way to print quotation marks and some other things which would generally be considered to be part of the command rather instead you can use escape characters such as backslash in order to avoid this these sort of things anyway that's why we need escape characters that is why they're very useful and that is why we use them we don't only use I mean you're gonna you're gonna use the backslash even though uh, you don't need it for navigation rather instead you will use it for escaping things such as these perhaps not in the echo command but believe me there will come a time where you will need to process a lot of things with a lot of other programs and you will need them anyway what I was uh, what I showed you a moment ago is in fact this greater than sign greater than sign basically says to the echo okay whatever you have redirect your standard output into I don't know into some file some file here doesn't matter which one so just whatever you have don't put it to standard output because this is standard output when it prints it out to your terminal screen uh, don't print it out to the standard output rather instead please redirect it to my file and put it there so that's a very nice feature these things are rather universal escape characters greater than sign uh, so you are able to in fact read uh, not only this is not network traffic but you are able to basically steer the traffic within your machine in a way you want it in a way you want it to function towards a place where you want it to go and it's fairly simple there isn't that much complication to it now let me just use this echo command in combination with grep command because that is yet another thing that I wanted to show you and on top of that we will need a pipe so look this is a pipe this is a piping sign uh, binder between two commands is basically saying pipe it through so whatever you have whatever you output so whatever the echo output and this is the output of the echo please pass it along this says the pipe please pass it along to the command that will stand on this side and on this side we will use grep which basically just pulls something out grep and we will say that 
I don't know, we want to pull, what shall we pull, I don't know, did you, or just did. And if I press enter, there you go, it has symbolized it completely red. So let's make a, let's make a file now. Actually, no, we already have a lot of files here that we can, I'm sure we can use at least some of them. Uh, what do we got in echo cat echo excellent so we have hey but this is not enough we should do echo I don't know hey there then the new line character how are you I feel random amazing right no sense of whatsoever, but doesn't really matter. Oops, uh, you need to... You need to get lost and go into the echo. Ah, it actually didn't recognize the new line characters. Okay, no problems. Let's go and search the man pages for that. Enable interpretation of backslash escapes. Oh, I forgot the E, but it seemed to be able to recognize some of the things. Backspace produce escape form new line. Okay, so I am correct in using this, but there is one thing that I am missing here, which is lowercase e. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, need a space here. There you go, so cat echo, there you go, so clear the screen, cat echo, and if you're wondering what these two spaces are, they were in the original echo, you can see them here. So if I was to delete it here, delete a space here, and delete a space here, press enter, and cat echo, oh no. Why do you have those tabs there? Ah, oh, come on, my good man, come on. What is the deal? I got no idea. Doesn't really matter for the time being. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with the echo command, but that's that's besides the point. What I wanted to show you is uh, the file itself. So you have have this weird looking file with those two spaces in the front. And since you have the file now, imagine that this file was like 400 pages long and you need to find particular words or particular patterns or I don't know, you need to find whatever. How do you do that? Well, okay, sure, a lot of text editors will have a find option and granted, the terminal text editors also have find options, but if you're doing something in your terminal and if you just want to figure out what a certain variable value is or if you want to format it in a way you can pull the text out you can put you can output the text the standard output and then you can redirect it to then you can pass it on to grep actually and with grep you can take particular lines which you can then in turn pass to yet another program to do something with them now okay you might think that this is a far-fetched scenario but no this is actually quite common so, for example, imagine that you have a program which is scanning for thousands of IP addresses and that program is gathering information whether the port 80 is open or not. It's looking for web servers. Anyway, that information, you get a lot of information there. I mean, if you're using one of the uh, one of well-known tools like Nmap, you're going to get a lot of information. Aside from the port, you might get, I don't know, some verbose output, how it was done, what what's the geo IP location of that particular IP address like where is where in the world it, is it located and so on and so forth and let's say you just need a collection of IP addresses which are in the following format so you have the IP address you have a confirmation that the port 80 is open but you don't want to put it in the table you're just saying okay I want the IP address and I want the city uh, in which this IP address is, you would have to use greppable output. 
and then you would need to pass it along to something else like into a file or something of a kind so that it would get sorted in such a fashion later on uh, as we progress grep will be inevitable you will see a lot of examples uh, as we use it because we will simply need that it. it's one of the most used commands out there anyway so now that we have this file echo I just want to show you how can you use grep in order to actually pull lines from it so here's what grep does it matches it matches the pattern it finds it and if it finds it in a certain line it will print that entire line out so it won't just print the word out it will print the entire line and it will change the color of that particular pattern which was found in that particular line so that you know that it's there anyway let's go ahead and say cat echo and there are countless ways of doing this I'm just used to doing it like this but I'm sure that somebody out there knows a simpler way uh, grep by by simpler I mean typing less however I found this to be a relatively easy and a simple example to follow through to build your foundation anyway cat echo pipe so pass whatever whatever you whatever you plan to put into standard output don't pass it to grep and then grep will actually pull something out of here let's say I want grep to pull I don't know hey pull hey excellent so you see it has printed out the line hey there but uh, grep is case sensitive and you can t type in dash I to ignore the case you see that's pretty much the same and look it will still print out hey there uh, let's see E A L excellent you see it has matched the pattern and it has printed that line out so let's see if I have some common patterns that are the same for at least two lines uh-huh okay so grep E you see how oh, this uh, this will actually print out all three of them let's see with the H Excellent. With H, it will print out only two of the lines. So you see, you can pass all sorts of patterns here without any sort of problems of whatsoever, and it will go for it and look for them. Now, as I said, we will use grep extensively throughout this tutorial, and you will see a great deal more of grep. That is why I would strongly recommend that you read the man pages on grep as extra reading material. Uh, you might think that it's vain or silly or something of a kind but the creators of these programs have written these manual pages and if you ask any Linux user out there any Linux system administrator they will tell you that they wouldn't be able to function without the man pages or the help pa or the help in general that you get from the terminal from the system so don't be don't shy away from them use them and especially for grep I would advise that you do read through it as you see you have multiple versions of it actually these are completely different programs performing the same per performing the same purpose as they are a bit more advanced so you have grep egrep fgrep uh, egrep is generally used today a lot as well but for simpler tasks you can use grep for something extremely complex you can use egrep as well anyway I bid you farewell here and I hope to see you in the next tutorial